So before I start uploading videos of the models I've been working on recently, especially the Beast Woman, because there's literally hundreds of those that I would want to show how I made them and where I got them from and stuff like that, instead I'll show you this terrain, the display board for my Forces of Nature army. The Forces of Nature army is still currently in progress and it's what I am working on right now. So I've got some of the models done, but the first thing I did was I made a display board. The main reason I did that is the Beast Women never had a display board. I took them to three or maybe four tournaments, and not once did I have a proper board to display them on. I definitely wanted to avoid that for the Forces of Nature Army, so the first thing I did was I made the board. You can see more pictures of the process that went into actually making the board on my website, fullypainted.com. In that, I've got in-progress photos when I was making the the hills, uh, the trees, everything involved. I took a bunch of pictures while I was making it, and so you can go there if you want to see any of those in-progress photos. So, the concept for this display board was I wanted there to be one segment for each element. In the Forces of Nature Army, they're comprised of either fire, earth, water, or air. So, Planning the army, I knew most of my army was going to be either fire, earth, and water. I was going to have some air, but not much. So what I decided to do is I wanted to make it a third of each of the major elements I was going to use. Fire, earth, and water. I wanted there to be a volcano and a lava field for the fire. And have a brush fire lead into the earthen section. And then have a coast for the water, so I could have an actual um, water area for all of my water models. The hill was going to be where all of the, um, the air elementals were going to be flying over top of it, so anything I had that was going to be related to air would be flying around or above the board, and so air never had its own specific area, just around the, uh, the mountain that I was going to create. So this was all made with uh, pink polystyrene, and you can get that in uh, 24 by 24 boards. So what I did is I got one 24 by 24 board on top of a piece of uh, MDF. So it's a um, it's a 24 by 24 slab of MDF. It's actually quite heavy. This whole thing. Um, and on top of that, I put the first uh, 24 by 24 piece of polystyrene cut out the water section, and then started making the hill by layering on the pink polystyrene into stacks, kind of like a pyramid or a ziggurat. Um, while I was doing that, there were a lot of gaps left, so it was pretty obvious what I had done to tear it, and I had, I had fully constructed the, the layout, and I still didn't like how obvious the gaps were. So what I did is I filled in the gaps with uh, a mixture of sawdust, paint, and white glue. Um, and then I painted over that uh, with house paint. Uh, just black and gray house paint. And that's what creates this like freckled look here. It gives it more added texture. It's actually a lot harder to see that it's been layered now. But if I turn it to its side, you can obviously see the layers of the polystyrene, which are a lot harder to see now that it's been filled, and it really didn't take much to do. That's the thing about this display board, is cost-wise, it was very cheap to make. Uh, a lot of it, like the polystyrene boards are maybe five dollars each, and the trees are made out of twigs from just a tree outdoors, some old tea leaves and some polyfiber that cost like five dollars for a bag, uh, which will give you enough to make a forest full of trees. So this is a twig that I've added the polyfiber to with that sawdust mixture again and painted to look like it was roots, that sort of thing. Uh, there's green stuff here to make the waves. The rocks are made out of bark from a tree that I ripped off the tree uh, and then painted to look like rocks. So the actual cost of this board was pretty minimal. Like the most expensive thing was probably the MDF slab. And I don't think that cost more than like $15 Canadian. 
So altogether, the display board, and I used house paints for most of it, that's the thing, is I painted uh, almost all of this with um, house paint that was uh, left over, mostly from, I work in a, uh, a home, I work at a home improvement retailer, and their paint department, they'll always have spilled cans or mistinted cans that'll be on for incredibly cheap. So that's one tip if you want to find cheap paint for your terrain. Just go to some home improvement retailer or a paint store. They'll always have cans that somebody's returned or that have spilled and they can't sell for full price and you'll get a killer deal on them. Uh, way more than 50% off. Especially if, they, like, if they've already been tinted, which they will be. You just gotta find the tints that work for you. So I keep an eye out and I get a ton of paint for really cheap by doing that. So I'm pretty happy with... Um, the actual look of the display board, especially the lava. Like, it took me a while. I'm not too happy with the lava field. I would probably redo that if I had the time or if I did it again. But I am really happy with the glowing of the uh, the rest of the lava and everything else, like the fire ruins, the ruins on the trees, which are actually really hard to see. But one of the coolest things about this board, and I'll show it to you now, some of the paint that I used in order to make this bright was neon paint I got from Michaels en masse. So when it's covered by a black light, it actually glows. I don't know if it shows up very well uh, while I'm recording it, but it's really awesome. The ruins on the, uh, the trees glow straight through. The lava glows all the way down, and even the brush fire glows. For being my first ever display board, I'm very satisfied with the results and I think it's the perfect backdrop for my Forces of Nature army. The fact that it's very glowing, like it's very neon, it's very bright, especially the water and the lava, that was intentional. And uh, I have tried to carry those themes into the models that I've made. A lot of them glow in the dark as well, just because I've used uh, that neon paint on them as well. Just, I, I really wanted them to be bright and to stand out, and I think I've really accomplished that. If you want to see more in-progress pictures of this project or the stuff that I'm working on currently, check out my website at fullypainted.com. If you have any questions about how it was made or any inquiries, you can reach me at uh, magshamay at gmail.com. That's M-A-G dot Shamay, S-H-A-M-M-E-H at gmail.com. Links are going to be in the description. Until next time, have fun.